Hey everyone, Elaine here with a new art journaling process video and I'm starting, I think I don't have the footage for this, um, what I'm starting with and I was just scribbling with the um, Neo Colors 2 and the Dina Wakely scribble sticks on the watercolor paper in Dina Wakely's journal. I didn't use any gesso and when you use such a paper watercolor paper it's very uh, absorbent and it's it's the way it's made is for watercolors to look so beautiful on it but they kind of soak into the paper and with the crayons that means that even if you try to blend them um, it's a bit difficult uh, on gesso no problem but here you can see I did try to blend those shapes those um, weird shapes that I made and it still leaves me with those scribbly lines so there's no right or wrong it's all about knowing um, you know how to get the look that you want so that's what I'm starting with and even though it was just you know trying to see how these sticks work um, I didn't really think about it too much but it was a really great starting point for this page and then I just went in with my Dr. PH Martin's radiant watercolors and added some color going around these shapes. I didn't think too much about it. There were already some watercolor stains on this that I really can't remember how they got there. <laughs> I think I lost the footage or maybe I didn't uh, film it uh, or I couldn't find it. I have a lot of videos. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, there were already a few stains of watercolors there and I kind of went with the colors that were already there. It's also possible that it just got dirty from doing another page um, or maybe the paints bled a little bit. I don't know. But yeah, it's just adding some color and then everything I let it dry and now I'm going back in. I drew, you can't... I think it's a little bit hard to see, but I drew a, a few simple patterns in those shapes, some lines and some dots, and now I'm just coloring in with watercolors around those patterns. So you can see that better in the close-ups. Uh, I did that with a pen and I used, I think I used waterproof pen, uh, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe not. I see the Jane Davenport uh, pen right next to my journal and that one is, yeah, so maybe I used that one. That one has actually water soluble ink and I actually like using both. It, you just get a different look. You know, if you use um, water resistant ink, then you can add anything on top of it, water, watercolor, all that stuff, and it's not going to move. But if you use uh, water soluble ink, it will react with uh, the water so if you are careful and kind of paint carefully around it you can um, kind of control how much smearing you're gonna get and I usually like to get just a little bit um, of that reaction it's it adds like a nice touch I think that looks kind of sketchy and that's usually what I like to go with. So here I am kind of not sure what I want to do and I decided since you know I'm really trying to I don't know get the feel I guess or use uh, such crayons these are the Neo Color 2 uh, in my art journal so I thought I'll just pull them and see what happens and I started working also with a brush kind of blending them but then I moved on to mostly using the crayon and dipping it in water as I go because it helps to release the pigment and you get um, more of a smooth line, less of a sketchy line, if that makes sense. Um, you know, because if you use the crayon dry, then the pigment kind of goes into all the little grooves of the paper. But if you get it a little bit wet, then it's all... Um, just wetter and the pigment uh, can kind of disperse more smoothly 
I hope that makes sense. But just try it. If you have these crayons, just try them. Uh, take watercolor paper, scribble with them dry, then dip them in water and scribble with them and you'll see what I mean. And I really like uh, how they look dipped in water better. Um, just works better for my style. So what I'm doing here is just I'm adding scribbles and texture and kind of going for the tone on tone look. Uh, although in some places I did go for some contrast. So for example, the bottom of my page, um, of my page here is more kind of a purplish violet color. And then I went in with the crayons in yellow and orange. So those are almost complementary colors and that um, contrast is very striking and pleasing to the eye, in my opinion, especially with those two colors, which I like, kind of violets and uh, orangey yellows. So I moved around also some things in my craft room and trying to have things more accessible to me. I don't have room to put everything on my desk. So I have two Ikea Rascal carts and I'm trying, I put my favorite supplies into them and I'm trying to keep them close by so I can just pull those. And um, it was very conducive in this, uh, in this particular situation because I grabbed my um, Jane Davenport mermaid markers, which were in the cart and not on my desk. And I wasn't planning on using them. So, you know, they were close by. I saw them, I grabbed them and I really like um, that part of the process. So I'm just playing with them and these are, if you're not familiar with them, these are brush markers. So you have ink in kind in this um, water brush and the ink just flows. And the nice thing about it is that, you know, you have that, um, that brush tip that you can play with and get that look of a brush, but the ease of using a marker. So these also have ink that is very reactive to water. Um, and I just loved that you can see I'm just scribbling and then I'm using a regular brush with some water to just wet some areas. And then you get that mixture of fine lines and then those drops of water, some of it smears, some of it doesn't. And it just looks really interesting, uh, adds a lot of detail and interest. And it's just uh, fun to make and fun to look at, I find. So since I was going all Jane Davenport here, I thought I would uh, pull out also her paint markers. And uh, I think they're called paint on markers. And I just added uh, some scribble lines. Now the the thing with the Jane Davenport uh, products, which I have uh, quite a few, and I think they're fantastic, um, is that they are available in North America at Michael's and for the rest of the world at the moment, uh, for the next few months, as far as I understand, uh, only on Jane Davenport's website in Australia, and that can get a bit costly for, um, at least for us in Europe, if you order from there. I know because I ordered quite a few things uh, also from her directly and it was very expensive. So um, I haven't really found a good substitute for the marker um, pens, like the brush marker pens, the mermaid markers. Uh, Pentel has some brush pens, but they are also really expensive. And these actually, the Jane Davenport ones come in a set. And even though it's, I think they cost, you know, without a coupon at Michael's uh, $40, I think, 39, something, something. Um, you get a lot, in my opinion, you get a lot for that money, especially if you have like a 50% off coupon. I think it's a great deal. Um, once you run out of the ink in these brushes, you can just refill it with your choice of ink. Um, so you also have a tool and not just, you know, the perishable or whatever that's called uh, ink, you know, that you can use up. The tool stays with you and you can use these for years and years. Um, but with the markers, I am going to try the paint markers. I, I want to get the Vicky Boutin ones who are also made by American Crafts, like the Jane Davenport ones, and see how those compare, because at the moment the Vicky Boutin um, 
products are more available outside of the US. So I'll test those art out. Uh, paint markers, you can find different brands, but they also get to be, tend to be a little bit pricey. So I added some doodles and yeah, that's it. I had so much fun making this. Uh, leave me a comment if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you a lovely day. Bye.